Uh, so sorry. No worries. Um, in or in order to um, you know so, sort of you know, get get the green vision going. So um, so in 2019, Chicago Wilderness um, and Partners began sort of this renewed green vision with the goal of engaging people. Um, uh, Sorry about that. Okay. Um, it, um, integrated healthy nature throughout the entire Chicago wilderness region, which includes not just Illinois, but also up into Indiana, Michigan, and Wisconsin. If you could move to the next slide, please. Um, at the top, you'll see the green vision statement. Um, Chicago wilderness envisions a vibrant region where people and nature thrive together, um, promoting diverse communities, healthy communities, economic vitality, and well-being for all. Um, we have this as the why we do it. Uh, I see it as a lofty, but certainly reachable vision that working together uh, with down-to-earth plans and in coordination can, can achieve this. And, and that really is the, the vision of Chicago Wilderness. So backing up a little bit, um, the steering committee asked me to, to you know, help with this climate goal. If you look at the bottom, you'll see there are three new areas. It's just sort of people, climate, and water. These are new um, to the green vision. The, the other um, areas, I would say, might be a little bit more, more familiar and related to the, the green vision 1.0. Um, but we thought it was very important to call out climate as well as people. Um, and water in this new iteration. And, and so that is why we're here to get today um, to just sort of update you. Over the course of the last year, this climate working group, uh, a handful of folks with the input of a, a range of stakeholders has created um, a, a climate goal as part of the refocusing and reintegrating of, of, the, of the green vision. And so today we're going to share the goal we're going to share the corresponding proposed activities, and then we're going to talk about it. And, and um, the other thing that we're going to do, and that'll be um, in just a moment, is we're going to learn more about the hub mapping process. And that's all about um, measurable goals and outcomes and tracking those outcomes. And so with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Ted, who's going to dive um, a little deeper into the climate goals. Thanks, Michelle, and good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Ted Hafner. I am the new Climate Committee Chair, taking over for Doug, and, and he really has done yeoman's work over the last year and sort of herding cats for us uh, mm -hmm. to help us come up with these goals. And, and he wants to go off and look at birds again, and he's tired, so um, I am taking over for him. So thank you, Doug, for all your help and, and continued uh, in, inclusion in the group. Um, so over the last year, as Michelle explained, um, we've been working really hard to get uh, a, a, a goal, an umbrella goal for climate, but also a number of sub goals um, for the climate goal. And, and that's what we're gonna be covering today. Uh, as we relaunch the climate committee, um, we're really looking for a lot of participation. It will be very participatory, but unfortunately today because of uh, what's gone on over the last year, there won't be all talking to you, but there will be a lot of talking to you. And I apologize in advance for that. That will not be the case moving forward, but we have a lot of information to cover today and we've done our level best to simplify it as much as possible for you. Uh, this goal, climate goal uh, summary, uh, basically are the top 30, uh, top level, 30,000 foot level, um, summaries of the climate goal. Uh, I believe Laura, through the in invitation, sent out the more complete wording uh, in an attachment to the meeting invite, and those will be posted online as well for your reference moving forward. Uh, so basically what we tried to do uh, to, to focus our climate energy within the Alliance and, and promote action is to develop strategies and tools to build resilience to climate change at a community level, whether those are natural communities or human communities within the CW region and the CW Alliance. Um, while we're focusing on Alliance work, 
Uh, we, we recognize that there are a lot of uh, potential non-members that we would like to tap into to really uh, spur action and, and community effort to uh, solve the crime, climate crisis because it's all connected, right? Um, so in, in this respect, as Michelle showed you before, our goals will relate to the other six uh, goal groups. And, and in truth, we will probably need them uh, to fulfill some of our goals, as well as they will need us to fulfill some of their goals. So that it'll, we hope to be very integrative um, and again, participatory and inclusive in this uh, endeavor. Uh, so the top level goal I just gave you but we also want to support regional emissions reductions that are in line with uh, global climate goals and also regional and local um, uh, actions and plans. Um, you know, we, we've had a lot of work come out in the past uh, couple of years. Uh, the Municipal Mayor's Caucus has their climate plan that just launched. We hope to integrate with that uh, quite a bit. Um, so there's a lot of, even though this is a, a cohesive group, there is going to be a lot of outreach and connection to the activity that's going on regionally, we hope. Um, we also want to facilitate uh, CW member connections to the wider community. That's what I just talked about. And then, uh, of course, throughout the time that we do this, we want to prioritize inclusivity at, at every point and with every strategy and action or decision that we do. We really want to be intentional to that. Um, and to that end, Michelle uh, referenced our outreach in creating these goals. We did uh, internal CW member surveys and we did uh, external non-CW member alliance surveys uh, to see if this rang true with some of our focus group. And, and while these goals are sort of draft goals for the moment, um, they are pretty well framed and, and, and you know, as, as a basis, but we will probably uh, end up tweaking them over the next year as we work both with communities and the other goal groups to uh, synthesize and catalyze these goals. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to Mark Bowman from the Field Museum, uh, who will uh, now talk about some of the, the new vision for CW and how we hope to integrate and uh, achieve some of these goals. Mark, you wanna take it away, please? Yeah, thanks very much, Ted. Um... And, and, and Michelle and everyone today uh, for being here. This is really an important moment. Um, I wanna just uh, touch on a couple of things that relate directly to what Ted just said, including the, um, the desire that the goals be related to each other um, and relating to what uh, uh, Michelle said that um, the addition of the goals five, six and seven about climate and aquatics um, and people are all together, all of a piece. And what I'm gonna say a few words about here uh, is about a tool we're developing, a mapping hub, which is designed to support these goal developments uh, to help to see how they relate to each other and how to ultimately lead us to some ways to track the work and to show what's happening. This is one of the great infographics that's been prepared in the last uh, month or so by Chicago Wilderness to um, illustrate where things are. Um, all this unfolds in the context of networks and meetings like this one, um, where we're trying to be um, all together in the room and then aligning to move forward towards action. You can see the big vision over on the left-hand side, the why, the what, um, uh, we're, we're on the previous document Michelle showed, but this moves towards um, where this happens and for whom and how. And if you can go to the next slide, we'll see that these goals um, relate to each other. Uh, the one Michelle showed was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here we see them all in a web, uh, relating to each other and that they are in service of that broad vision of healthy lands uh, for, for all in the Chicago region. And one way to bring this to life 
is through a mapping hub. And we've just started to go uh, softly live with this hub. Um, over the course of the last year, my colleague, Mark Johnston at the Field Museum has done a tremendous amount of work and a group of uh, folks from across the region, including CMAP, NERPC, uh, Sewer Pack, Open Lands, uh, Argonne, have been very much uh, engaged in, in thinking together. We've been meeting with each of the goal teams to kind of start to see what data do you need to support uh, your goal. Um, and I've got maybe a minute or two. Um, I will uh, just simply share my screen for a moment just to show you um, what this is starting to look like. And excuse me for just a second here. Um, you're seeing sorry, let's see here. There we are. Um, this is sort of what the idea for the hub is. Um, it's it's on an ES and an Esri platform. Um, it would indicate how each of the goal teams. Uh, work could be reflected. Um, there is a lot of data that has been gathered and more could be included in here as we go. Um, and then each one of these can lead you towards um, an interactive map. Uh, for example, here's the goal five. This is the one about people. And I think here's there's a lot of relationship with the goal six teams work. And what you can see here is a map with different data layers that you could uh, pop in here. This one happens to show the trail network, uh, but we could add more data uh, as we go. And then also have a map gallery in support of each of the goal team's work. So you could just simply download a PDF of a map if you'd like. What we've done here is just put in some of the great work that TNC has done in their green print mapping process that shows some of the vulnerabilities to climate change from a stormwater, air quality, and uh, habitat loss perspective, and how that relates to the most vulnerable communities in the Chicago region. So I just wanted to give you a quick commercial about this tool that's in development. I'm eager to hear where the conversation goes from here. Um, because we want to be sure that we're, uh, as you can see, there would be a map for each of these goal teams. They relate to each other. And um, we would hope ultimately that can lead to some tracking of progress. Uh, how much land acquired, how many more people accessing nature and so forth as we go forward. So that is my quick commercial for today. I just want to say I'm sitting here in the Chicago Park District's Ford Calumet Environmental Center today. They opened to the public yesterday. It's a beautiful place in a beautifully restored piece of nature. And um, uh, everybody should meet here. Thanks, Ted. Back to you. Thanks, Mark. Um... We are going to take a, a moment now to, to review the meeting objectives that we hope to accomplish today. Um, the high level uh, objective is to familiarize ourselves with the goal and sub goals as written um, or summarized in this case. Uh, we wanna get to know each other. Uh, and then we wanna discuss areas of climate solutions action that, that share interests uh, with your own, that share the interests of all of us, uh, whether they be yours or um, the, the CWs, uh, I, I think one of the interesting things over the last year is this realization that, that instead of CW being a separate entity from partner organizations, really uh, CW work and partner work should be one and the same. Um, so that's a main emphasis of this, this new sort of rebrand and relaunch of the climate committee. Um, to further this end, uh, we're going to go into a quick breakout room for about 10 minutes. Uh, there will be four of you per room. And really what we want to do is, is just have you introduce yourselves to each other and then answer what brought you here today. 
Uh, after the, the breakout room, we're going to go into a, a mentee slide where you get to kind of input uh, what brought you here today and why. Um, so be prepared for that, uh, but hopefully it'll be a fun exercise and we are going to split you up randomly for this one. Uh, although later in uh, two or three breakout rooms, we're going to ask you to um, self-identify, which will be kind of exciting uh, as an experiment. So Laura, if you want to facilitate the breakout rooms, please go ahead and do so. And we will, uh, there will be a committee member in each breakout room uh, for facilitation sake and uh, enjoy your 10 minute conversations, everybody. Thank you. All right, welcome back Actually, everybody. No, not yet. <laughs> there we go. Excellent. They're still trickling in, sorry. That's okay. Third time's a charm, right? <laughs> Now? Yes. Okay. Welcome back, everybody. Um, if your introductions were as lively as ours were, uh, you had some uh, good, uh, nice opportunities to meet some like minded folks. Um, now we're just going to do a, a quick mentee uh, platform exercise, which is really interesting. Uh, it'll be a word cloud and and really what you're going to do is just on your phone or computer phone is usually easier go to the menti.com and then type in the 84996588 number at the top of the screen and type in what you uh what brought you here today uh, and as you type it your answers in um the screen will populate you've already seen learn and connect uh conservation more conservation um but this will give us an idea of what brought people here. And the, I'm sure you're all familiar with this, but, but the bigger the word, um, the more people are, are saying the same word as you, uh, which is kind of interesting. So we'll just give this a couple of minutes to populate. Um, I might read out some stuff that grabs my attention. More power together, I like uh, quite a bit, collaboration. Um, speaks to that as well. I see some climate justice, um, actions, adaptations, strategy. We have um, a question. Actually, Ted, there's a question yeah. from Beth Byer. Beth. Oh, go ahead, Beth. Oh. You're muted. Beth, you're muted. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Beth. I didn't actually, I was trying to figure out how to type in the number to that. Is it mentimeter.com? Is that where we're going? Yes. Do you okay. see, can you see the link in the chat? You can just even um, copy and exactly. click Exactly. Yeah. So, and I'm just going to, I'm just in the, I think I pushed question by accident. Sorry. No problem. <laughs> Thank you. And we'll take just sort of another minute with this. What I'm interested in is uh, as these words sort of populate, um, a number of them actually correspond to our sub goals that we'll be talking about later in the in the program. Um, so that's really neat and interesting to see. Uh, I see alignment. Um, I, I see a couple dichotomies. There's optimism, but I think I saw uh, some pessimistic uh, or anxiety provoking words. Um, future proofing. Can, I like that. Can I, can I comment on that one, Ted? Yes, you Jack may. Please, Mario. Uh, Jacqueline from uh, Shed was saying that, you know, people's rising anxiety, at least this is as I understood it, if she wants to correct me, but in a sense, the rising anxiety around climate right now gives her renewed optimism that people are ready to engage um, and take action. So the two are, the two are connected. And then, you know, we're, we're ahead of time a little bit. Maybe you want to take a minute just for folks to, to say what grabs at them, what words, and just pop in as you're, uh, as you're interested. What grabs you? Urban nature, catch up on CW. Yep, that's what we're doing today. Opportunities, I like that one. Excellent. Well, it looks like things have stopped moving. So we will capture these in a download afterwards and they'll be included in the meeting minutes. But this is a really interesting way to see what, what Susan, our, um, uh, sorry, Susan popped up on my chat, um, what, what's interesting to, to most people. 
Um, and then Laura, I think I take my screen back and I can just share it, right? And now we're back to me. Perfect. So we did the Menti code. Um, the other thing that we've worked a lot on over the last year as we've thought about these goals and, and sort of reorganized CW to be more collaborative um, is this idea of a give-get uh, ratio or relationship uh, for networks. And uh, this is a really interesting and eye-opening concept for a lot of us um, because it, it, it sort of talks about mutuality and, and synergy in a way that I think uh, has, has been sort of across the board missing from the bulk of CW over the past couple of years. And, and so this idea that, that you're a part of a network and you get benefits, but you also give benefits um, is really intriguing to me. And, and some of these uh, ideas provide for shared outcomes, um, shared expertise and knowledge, right? Collaboration, things are better when you have a diverse group of people and ideas. Uh, it, it can bring new or improved capacity to your network organization or even your individual work. Um, resources is a, a big uh, benefit of this. There's efficiency and creativity if we can master it. Um, <laughs> I, I think, you know, we're still in the, the crawling stage. So uh, hopefully that will become a lot uh, more promulgated as we start to reach across the goal groups. And then of course, it, it allows for new leaders, new ideas, volunteers, and, and donors. Um, I'm not gonna stress donors too much because we don't talk about that, but it, it does play into this because CW, as you know, is an all volunteer or mostly volunteer organization. Um, and, and that's why this rebrand and this give get idea is so important. Um, any questions before I go to the next slide? I can't see everybody, so I'm gonna rely on the group here. Um, but what we're gonna do is go to another breakout room that will also be 10 minutes, uh, also randomly selected, a bit smaller in size. But again, uh, you're gonna introduce yourself briefly, uh, share what you'd like to get out of your participation in the group uh, and consider um, what you'd like to contribute. And then are there any common uh, overlaps in these give gets? Um, and then, for the last few minutes, we're asking you to identify a few uh, substantial give and gets that your group discussed, and we'll do the, a menti exercise for that uh, once we get back. So, Laura, this is, uh, are we ready for the breakout room number two? We are, and we're going to go right now. Thank you. He's back. Excellent. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we're going to go to menti again. And we're gonna have uh, two slides, two questions this time. The first one we're gonna ask, what are your gives for participating uh, in CW or your hopeful gives? Uh, and then we'll focus on the gets in a, a later slide uh, next after this. So go ahead and log on please. And let's all put in our give and gets. And then as people type in, you can see some of the responses. They're really interesting. So there's a lot of expertise. There's some listening, um, access, knowledge. And, and Laura, I, I don't know if you're the one that controls sort of the can scroll up or down so we can see other answers yes. as we roll in. Okay. Thank you. Connections. Data, that's a good one. Um, I think we're gonna be looking at a lot of new types of data for this group in terms of how we integrate the other goals. 
voice to communities and support for CW goals. I'm gonna move my camera. Series of projects within climate committee to develop adaptation strategies for particular habitats and geographies. Desire to make a difference, network. These are great, really well thought out for quick answers. We'll take a couple more minutes to let people sort of look because sometimes when you look, it, it jogs a thought that you might wanna to add to. Ooh, climate change into policy. That's great. There's a lot of that needed. Climate action plan for the region. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Adaptation planning, conservation biology training, sweet. Connections to seemingly disparate topics. That's important because I, I, in my opinion, I feel like climate's connected to everything, but that's just me. Local knowledge, that's a big one. All right, are these mostly done? Are people done moving stuff in? It looks like there aren't a whole lot of, of extras. CMAP is updating the regional greenhouse gas inventory. Excellent. Stormwater management planning, yep. Heat should probably go in there. Uh, so people that are working on heat island issues, if there's anybody doing that. Excellent. And again, these will be downloaded and, and posted online so everybody can kind of take a look at their own uh, leisure if they have such time in their lives. Um, all right, do we want to go to Gets next? Laura, you want to, is that, I think that's on you to advance that, right? Yes. Yeah. And then the same thing for gets. And on your phone or computer, you just say next question. And that's how you uh, fill that in. Localized data and plans. Yeah, data is going to be a really important thing for us all to share the connections across the goal teams and throughout the region, inside and outside the alliance, community, regional perspective, implementation of nature based solutions, connection to other groups. That's a really important one. Um, during our outreach, we, uh, outside of CW, we, we got a lot of responses, but we still owe um, a lot of work in that, that regard. Align strategy, data, more data, case studies, mapping skills, awareness of efforts underway. And again, take some moments, I'll be quiet. So you read through these, maybe it'll jog something, some ideas in your head, and you can put those in as well. Ah, they're still coming in. Good job, everybody. It was interesting in our um, in our breakout room. We discussed uh, Maria Sadowski mentioned that she's been involved in in Chicago wilderness almost since its inception, and she was talking about how she hopefully was interested 
in um, this notion because historically, organizationally, uh, this give get ratio was out of whack and CW hasn't done a good job of it. So she was excited to see this focus on uh, giving as well as getting because historically she felt CW was really good at, at getting but not so good at giving. Um, so that's really interesting. Ecosystem expertise, symbiosis. We actually have patents on people. Meaningful conversation, brainstorming with action. That's a great one. Increased visibility. Yep, you'll see in a moment that one of our aims is to bring other groups up and amplify their voices. Case studies. Are people pretty much done entering this and reviewing it? We want a couple more minutes. Hope, that's a nice one. Bigger impact working across the region. I like that one. Carbon offset collaborations and opportunities. Placements for our interns. <laughs> That's a good one. Excellent. All right, you can see my screen. Uh oh. Hold on, present. Okay. Now you can see my screen. Um, so no, right? No, nope, not yet. No, nope, not yet. Right now we see. Well, we saw you. Okay, so share screen. There we go. There we go. All right. Sorry about that. Um, so we did the breakout room two. We did the give and gets through Menti, and now we're going to take a moment to review. Uh, we have a number of sub goals, right? So we have that big umbrella goal that talks about what we want to, how we want to positively impact the region through climate change uh, emphasis and activities. But really, we had five sub goals that we created based on our, our, our survey feedback. Adaptation and mitigation were historically part of this working group. Uh, so was policy and uh, uh, resilience group. Um, but we switched that around a little based on the goals and what we heard both from within and without the network uh, to keep adaptation and mitigation, uh, but bring in a new group, uh, a new topic for engagement and justice. Um, and then we had a lot of discussion about education and awareness because that was sort of an allied group that uh, Susan Ask, who was on this meeting, was running. Um, sort of in, in conjunction with the climate committee, but they were a separate group. And we had a lot of discussions about how advocacy fits into this because it is education awareness, but it's also policy. So we decided to, to uh, split those two groups up. And, and as we go through, um, each sort of owner of the sub goal is gonna talk uh, about summarizing the sub goal and, and what we're gonna ask you to do is to think about which one interests you most today uh, for participation um, in the, the upcoming breakout rooms because you're actually gonna self-identify for the last breakout session. You get to pick, we don't identify you as a random breakout group. Um, so we're gonna try that today. It's a new feature in Zoom. We cross our fingers and hope it goes well. Uh, but until we get there, um, we're going to hear from the sub goal leads or temporary leads uh, because not all of them have been filled yet. We have some moving parts uh, about what each uh, sub goal entails. Um, and Doug, you are adaptation, so you get to take that one first. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, so I have volunteered to keep going on adaptation in part because the climate committee historically has been really focused on adaptation and in part because my 
key interest in climate is mostly about birds and adaptation for for birds. And um, the in thinking about adaptation, we were one of our main focuses is on helping the landowners within CW um, bring adaptation into their management plans going forward. And some are doing a lot of that. Some of them are doing relatively little of that. And I think we can bring a lot of expertise in that. And we have over the years done a series of projects that identified um, adaptation strategies for certain geographies or, um, or habitats. We also wanted to look at how climate change affects um, communities and species that we view as important in the Chicago wilderness area that are particularly vulnerable to climate change and think about what are the strategies that do that. Hopefully a lot of the adaptation at the level of the landowners will do that, but there will be species where you have to think specifically about what are the answers for them. And then third, a piece that we really haven't done much with over the years is working with community partners to bring adaptation into the communities using nature-based um, solutions. And so this might be within the city, um, tree planting to deal with urban heat island effects or help in mitigating flood risk and things of that nature. So that's a piece that's sort of new in our thinking about adaptation. And I think that gives you a sense of what we're thinking about with adaptation. Thanks, Doug. Um, mitigation is next. And, and this was one of the goals that I helped work on. Um, because I have been promoted, this is a hole that we're trying to fill. Uh, Susan Ask, who was with education, is very interested in mitigation. So uh, she might take this over. But um, she's in grad school right now. So she would love the help on both this and her former committee, uh, which is our sub goal, which is education. Um, so that's why there's no name at the bottom of this. Um, but uh, by default, I get mitigation today because Susan is covering education. So mitigation is really interesting because in, in this network, um, we're trying to positively influence the region uh, to, to reduce emissions, right? But um, how do you do that especially when we're a network of what, 280 uh, partners, right? So there's a part of this that, that is asking us and partner organizations to actually look at their own carbon footprint and greenhouse gas emissions and, and calculate and quantify them as a baseline and then work to actually reduce that over time. And, and that's where we fold into uh, you know, the Paris Initiative and regional uh, local emissions goals as well. So that's a, a big new effort that I'll be really interested to see how that plays out. Um, then there's, uh, you know, not only just the global region, but uh, specific members of our groups uh, that, that look at um, implementing nature-based solutions to, to help mitigate and sequester carbon. Um, so, you know, these are things like operations and maintenance impacts, uh, mowing uh, versus burning, how we think about O&M. Uh, so that's a, a component of this goal. And then uh, the, the last main component of this goal is to support low impact renewable energy sourcing, transmission and distribution, which is gonna be a really big policy push and battle um, that other states are starting to see, uh, New Jersey in particular, uh, Virginia, there have been a couple lawsuit, uh, pipeline lawsuits there that have gone all the way to the Supreme Court. Uh, we're still pending on some of those decisions, I think, although I'm not sure where New Jersey has landed with their fight. Um, but that's a big, that's going to be a big deal in this region as well uh, to, to, to kind of reduce the damage of, of these impacts um, and promote sound renewable energy sourcing and siting. Um, so that's the high level for mitigation. And then um, next we're gonna go to uh, Mario for adaptation and, or sorry, uh, engagement and justice. Mario, take it away. Thanks, Ted. 
Um, so you can see the way we wrote the overall goal here to amplify and support the efforts of climate action, climate justice leaders. So we want to be thinking about, in a sense, who's out there now doing this work, especially at a grassroots level and supporting them and, and helping to uplift their uh, innovative ideas. And the idea is to, as it says, amplify, to bring attention to them as well as tangible resources. The five ways we're thinking about doing that, you can see there. The facilitation of, whoops, can we go back? The facilitation of networking and engagement is, uh, yeah, um, that even can be through things like the cafes, and we're talking about the hub. Uh, Mark Bowman was talking about, to us about that earlier, and, you know, how do we make that hub both a uh, benefit of belonging to CW, but how do we make it accessible enough to everyone but it's also an entry point to uh, putting your toe in the water with CW um, is one of the questions we might be looking at in this particular sub goal group. Facilitating collaboration and partnership among climate justice organizations and others. Um, this is something where folks like myself and Seva Gandhi, who are part of uh, Chicago Sustainable Leaders Network, we've been talking about wanting to do matchmaking um, between the grassroots and the grass tops for quite some time, and this is a, a goal that might include things like that. Providing technical feedback during the planning of CW members' uh, climate initiatives. How can we help members think early on about those asymmetries in power between, say, a grass tops group and a grassroots group, and, uh, and how you account for those and how you design a project from the start? And you know, how do we do that in a way that both brings opportunity to BIPOC communities um, to be sort of the consultants on these things. And yet at the same time, we provide enough space for our members uh, to talk about those things and even get them on their radar um, through, our, through our convening. Providing resources and expertise for climate change, climate justice campaigns that are related to, but they go beyond traditional natural area issues. This is that need when we're talking about engagement and justice, that, that need to kind of go beyond just uh, you know, what can we do to help communities by greening the, the area that's near them? But, you know, how do they want to fit traditional farming into that? How do they want green jobs training to be part of that? Um, so how do we have a big vision of, of our greening so it overlaps with the co-benefits that communities want? And then prioritizing CW climate adaptation mitigation initiatives that it reduce inequality. Again, that has to do with looking at the kinds of adaptation and mitigation um, making sure that, you know, disenfranchised people are the ones that are getting those benefits um, rather than them somehow, you know, it resulting in something, say, like uh, green gentrification. And in fact, um, we had a discussion in group five, our group five meeting last week. Um, there's a small group of us there that want to start a discussion around green gentrification. And I think that a, a discussion like that would overlap uh, with the goals of with this with this particular sub goal and could be something that we work on jointly um, with people that are working under that goal. Okay, I hope that that was fast, but I hope people got the gist of it. Thank you, Mario. Uh, Ellen, you're up next for advocacy. All right. So um, the advocacy sub goal we have three sort of main components to that. Um, Ted, I'm sorry. Do you mind going? Oh. You're on it. Um, uh, so the first part of this would be informing decision makers, elected officials, government staff um, of the existence of this goal. And the way it's written right now, we would ideally do that within two months of it being finalized and approved by CW membership. Um, that initial conversation would then hopefully be followed by regular progress updates on how we're advancing with these goals. And of course, if there's a moment where we can advocate to these decision makers about how they can uh, take action or make a policy that might uh, support or they can stop an action or policy that might not support um, these goals, there would be those lines of communication and um, advocacy open. Um, the second component was something that we envisioned being part of the CW Government Relations Committees. Uh, purview, and that would be uh, really preparing CW members for taking climate advocacy action. Um, and the sort of pieces of that we identified were developing and maintaining resources on the CW portal that could be tools for folks to access and help them uh, plan their own advocacy and be successful in taking that kind of action. 
Um, also facilitating climate issue dialogues with CW partners, uh, CW members, and uh, having moments where people can talk about not only the issues, but the potential policy solutions for them. And also uh, we talked about having that committee be responsible for alerting CW membership of uh, actions they can be taking for advocacy. And so we were envisioning either email alerts or uh, during meetings, having a moment where they could say, here are some things that you can do um, to support advocacy efforts. Um, and then the final point here is about advocating for adhering to and promoting existing climate efforts in the region. Two that are called out here are the Chicago Agreement uh, for Climate and Community and the America is all in backslash we are still in um, effort as well. Um, and then I saw earlier in the chat, Edith dropped the Metropolitan Marriage Caucus um, Climate Action Plan, which came out after we wrote these goals, but that's an obvious addition to one of the efforts that we would want to support as we do advocacy. Thanks, Ellen. Uh, and just to, to mention, you know, the America, we are still in that one. That was in effect because we started this work before we were back in the Paris Agreement. So you can see some of these need revision uh, and that will happen as we reach out to the other goal groups uh, to figure out how we work on these and refine these further. Uh, Susan, you're up last for education, please. Right. So with education, um, these goals are divided up kind of by audience. Um, the first group um, at, by audience and kind of um, purpose. So our audience primarily is going to be Chicago Wilderness members. And this is a lot of what the education group has, has done historically. And now we've kind of aligned these, um, these activities to support the, the goal of climate action and some of the specific sub goals you've just heard about. So um, we'll do things like develop workshops, develop um, share uh, resources and, and training materials uh, to do things like um, help meet the um, engagement and justice sub goal uh, by helping to helping CW members to build in equity goals and build partnerships with environmental justice organizations. So we'll be working collaboratively with Mario to help um, help Chicago Wilderness members to do that. Also working with um, the mitigation goal to really emphasize cutting emissions uh, in the region and among Chicago Wilderness members. So uh, we're talking about things like um, uh, sharing resources and maybe a workshop on how to calculate a climate footprint and develop a climate action plan for an organization that's a member of Chicago Wilderness. Um, working with Doug on adaptation to, um, to share information about how to bring um, bring adaptation into the work that everyone is already doing um, in conservation in Chicago wilderness. Um, and so the first part is about helping to meet this broad climate goal that we have. And then another part is really focused on um, the education efforts of Chicago wilderness members and will continue to hold uh, climate clinics that we've been doing for about 10 years. Um, and the content of those is refreshed with each new clinic. And so they'll reflect not only um, priorities set up in these goals, but also as, um, as the opportunities for climate action change with, um, with this increasing urgency that I think a lot of people are, are finally feeling, um, especially with all this, all the impacts of the the heat and drought that we're seeing right now. Um, so we'll be revising, in addition to workshops, we'll be publishing materials. Um, we've made the, uh, the original Climate Action Plan for Nature 1.0 in, available in full, and we'll be um, sharing more materials to help Chicago Wilderness members and people in the region to understand um, and, and find resources about climate, um, climate impacts and action here. 
And we've also talked about a recognition program uh, to complement some of the other Chicago Wilderness recognition programs for the great work that happens. But this one focused on, on climate. Um, and, you know, this is, um, this is an open invitation to get involved in, in education and awareness. Um, we're kind of uh, rejoining the climate education team with the broader um, climate action team. And we would love more people to, uh, to be involved in this. this um, uh, the goal is to help Chicago Wilderness realize uh, climate action in the region. Um, and we'd love your help. Thanks, Susan. That was really good, everybody. Um, so now we're going to go into quite a bit longer breakout rooms. We're going to have 20 minutes to discuss what you heard. Uh, and, and this is where you self-identify. Um, so what we're going to do in these breakout rooms is review uh, the sub-goal of interest and the indicators together and, and spend some time familiarizing ourselves with that. And then really what we want to get is your, your feedback and input what do you like about the sub goal and why? Um, and are there elements of this goal that you can that you're currently working on at your or organization or that you would like to be working on and vice versa, right? This gets back to that give get uh, idea that we talked about earlier. Um, and then again, at the end, we'll do a, a mentee exercise to uh, share out what uh, globally, what, what people have, have been talking about in these rooms. Um, so, Laura, uh, since we're new with this self-identification thing, I'll let you take this away and do your thing so that we can all choose a group. Um, okay. And then just uh, one more point of clarification. The, the folks that just uh, spoke about each sub-goal will be in, in those breakout rooms to kind of facilitate the conversation. Um, so you won't be thrown out on your own. Um, now, Laura, you can take it away. Okay, I will open the rooms and if anybody has a problem, I can just manually assign you. So don't worry, we'll just open it now and uh, please try to join. Thank you. Yes, they're actually, I think everyone's back in. Okay, welcome back. Um, now let's go to Menti again. We had some great discussions in the mitigation uh, a breakout room. I, I hope others did too, but um, if you go to Menti, it, just put in what you like about the sub goals uh, and, and goals, um, if you could, please. Just so we see what pops up. Yeah. And Laura, I'm getting, when I hit the next question, I'm still getting a, a hanging thing. Maybe I went too far. Um, People are getting it, so it's just me. Okay. Yeah, I went too far, and it, as far as I can tell, you can't get back. <laughs> yeah, so. At least I couldn't figure it out. If you log back in, Doug, it'll take you straight to that question and, and others if they're having the same issue. I guess there's no, there's no brownie points for working ahead in this case. We can <laughs> only go so far. <laughs> and would it be helpful if people added which goal um, you were oh, yes. about that you're Sorry, uh, I, I meant to mention that. Um, type in which or a, a, a letter or a number for, for the sub goal. Um, adaptation was one, mitigation was two, um, uh, community and justice was three. Um, uh, advocacy, four is four, advocacy. Yep, and five is education and awareness and engagement. Or you can just use the real words. Yes. <laughs> Sorry about that.
I like the red box, a very good first attempt. That's how we think of it. These are draft. Um, they will be refined over time. Uh, and that'll be part of this work of this committee. So if you're into that, um, not that we're gonna open up and start from scratch, but these will evolve as we uh, talk to communities and uh, talk to other goal groups uh, as to how our work overlaps. Someone liked how they're integrated and well thought out. The engagement and justice breakout are looking to bring a DEIJ lens to their work. Awesome. Raise those voices and support those communities. Mitigation sub goals are proposed of what is going on broadly. There's potential for engagement with stakeholders. These are great, thank you. Take a couple more minutes. Again, what you see might spur other ideas or comments. Happens to me all the time because, you know, I'm smart, but not that smart. Includes both a focus on land and water-based adaptation strategies. Yep, and the, the water group is kind of new as well as the ag group to CW. That's interesting. Advocacy, saying our officials loud and proud, we stand for clean energy. Excellent, we'll take another minute. Sounds like there's some good support. There's some critical eyes here, that's great. You know, you never get things right on the first attempt. Excellent. Again, these will be downloaded. Uh, missing an ah component. Uh, who wrote that? Can you explain more about that, please? That's interesting to me. It was group two. Is the author of that comment still present? Want to say more about that, please? Missing an ah component, maybe aha component. Or maybe AH is AH code for something. I don't think it's an element. If I remember back to my science days. Could be a new one. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. It's, it's scrolling in the middle column right now. Two, right. missing an Two. ah component. AH. All right. Um, why don't we advance the slide? I'll start sharing my screen again. And that's, everybody can see this, right? Back on my screen. Yes, thank you, Laura. Sorry. No, no, you're fine. Um, all right, so we've done the breakout room. We've heard from you, that's awesome. And now we get to wrap up the meeting and, and let you go on your Friday, maybe 10 minutes early or so. So first of all, thank you all for coming to this relaunch. Um, we've been sort of planning and thinking about this for a long time and, and fretting about certain components of this. And, and, and really, I just, I personally wanna thank you all for coming. And I also wanna take this moment to thank the other Climate Goal Group members for working over the last year. Uh, on these goals. Um, obviously, the work is not complete quite yet, but I think it's a really good start in terms of this new CW uh, organization that we have and, and mindset, right? This uh, network mindset. Uh, I've said multiple times, we'll send out the notes from today's meeting. I think Laura will also post them on the website. Um, to keep this momentum going, uh, the Climate Committee used to meet quarterly, right? I think at some point we will get back there, but we're not quite there yet. Uh, so to capture this momentum, we were thinking of, of meeting in the next uh, month or two. And the next meeting options based on the goal group's availability are um, Wednesday afternoon on uh, uh, September 29th or early October, uh, all day those slots seem to be available. So um, please look for a doodle poll uh, including those three dates, uh, if you still want to participate, which I hope we compelled you to do today, uh, if we did our jobs right, uh, for the second meeting 
And at that meeting, we hope to uh, review and further discuss the climate hub and the integration with other CW goals, re re review what the other goal groups are in more detail and how we overlap and, and which sub goals overlap with which groups because they might not all be the same, right? Um, we'll talk more about the give get relationship because that is a cornerstone of this work uh, through some of the critical comments that we heard and saw earlier. Um, Susan mentioned that the climate, the CW climate action plan was launched in 2010. Uh, and for many years, it was just like a three or four page executive summary, but it's actually a 60 page document um, that has a really a lot of good stuff in it. Uh, some of it's outdated, some of it is still germane. And, and, um, and, and, and we wanna talk about how we integrate these goals into that and revise it so that we can actually put it out in the world and support a lot of the other actions and plans and activities that are ongoing now. We heard from uh, Edith Macra and we, we mentioned the Municipal Mayor's Caucus um, plan that is, that is based on the Greenest Region Compact. Uh, so, you know, integrating and revising that and then uh, revisit the sub goal work groups and opportunities for this give good and give get and to launch this uh, work out into the world and actually make an impact because one of the other things that we've heard is that uh, in its former life CW was really good at, at talking, but uh, maybe lacked a little in doing um, so, as you've seen that we want to actually get to climate action and elevate uh, climate action in the region. So that's what we're looking for roughly out of the next meeting. Um, and then lastly, uh, please do get in touch with us if you think we've missed something major or you like what we're doing, we can all be, you know, we can all use some cheerleading um, after the last year that we've had collectively uh, and individually. Um, so that's it for me. I, I wanna just really thank everybody for coming today. And, and also my fellow co-presenters for, for working so well with me to, to make today a success. Um, and that's all I have, thank you. I guess Bye. I would just ask any, anybody have any follow-up questions that yeah. just you don't wanna, you know, didn't have a time to bring it up in the group? And, and, and we, I just, we still have time, 10 minutes, so. 